Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank uh, UK Catalyst Hub for giving me the opportunity to present our work. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank to uh, UK Catalyst Hub for uh, support this uh, uh, project and under the catalytic transformation in and water uh, funding. So today in my talk, I will tell about you um, uh, the chemical platform that we are developing in the Margrove here in Queen University, Belfast. Uh, we are using ionic liquid uh, gel uh, to immobilize uh, biocatalyst and chemocatalyst chemo, chemo to perform the homogeneous catalysis in water. So the, what the gel, gel is, is a homogeneous uh, material is a compromises of uh, two uh, substances. One is the liquid phase uh, dispersed within the solid phase. And there are many ways uh, gel can be uh, classified and based on the liquid phase or the solid phase. But our interest is in ionic liquid as the liquid phase and low molecular weight gelator and oxide as a solid phase to make our material. And uh, the strategy that we have developed in the group is that we are using a hydrophobic ionic liquid uh, because we want to protect uh, the catalyst from the water. So hydrophobic ionic liquid uh, inhibit the water to go inside uh, the gel, but the gel is allowed to go, the substrate to go through and the product to separate from there. And we have, as mentioned earlier, we have immobilized an in enzyme catalyst uh, as a lipase and an iron thermal catalyst which is an oxygen peroxide activator. So my talk today will be in two parts. First part, I will talk about the, uh, our new work, which is, is still unpublished uh, in the lipase immobilization in the soft ionic liquid gel. And the second part, I will talk about our work on an uh, iron thermal catalyst immobilized in a solid uh, like hard uh, silica gel. So biocatalyst immobilization, there are many different ways, as you know, that we can mobilize a biocatalyst. Uh, one could be the adsorb, where the just uh, enzyme can be absorbed on the surface, and then we can be interrupted or covalent bonded to the uh, material, or enzyme can be closely linked together to make them immobilized uh, enzyme. Uh, but our interest in the entrapment method, uh, particularly because uh, this uh, method allowed to protect the enzyme from the reaction condition and another way that this gives us the advantage to uh, control the design of the material so, so suitable for the uh, enzyme. And uh, as I said that our interest in the ionic liquid as the material. So ionic liquid are uh, compromises with the cation anions, just like a normal uh, table salts, but uh, the difference is that they are in irregular shape. And because of these irregular shapes, they are often in the liquid in the reaction conditions. And the common ionic liquids that are used for biocatalysis applications are imidazolium based, uh, ammonium based, or uh, phosphonium based ionic liquids, and recently is, is the collinium based ionic liquid. But there is a range of other uh, anions that can be, we can add each of these ionic liquids. So the, what ionic liquid offers to the biocatalysis is that is, is the tuning ability because we can change the chain of the alkyl chain of the cation or we can change the anion and it gives a different properties. And so how we, that we can tune the property to make our catalyst suitable. And also another advantage is that we can mix uh, two different ionic liquids together to bring a new property to the ionic liquids that could be uh, suitable for the uh, catalyst immobilization. And uh, the, for our biocatalysis applications, we are interested in phosphonium based ionic liquid, and then we use a low molecular weight gelator. And the phosphonium ionic liquid, we are using a long alkyl gel C614, in, and uh, we are, have used tested with different anion uh, for the gel formations. So the gelator that we have used are able to gel uh, many different uh, ionic liquids uh, with different cations, uh, with the uh, same cation but different anions. And one significant uh, improvement we have seen is using uh, NTFT2, which diplomide and phosphonium ionic liquid, which give a, a very super uh, critical deletions, which is just 0.5 weight percent. So we have uh, used uh, this uh, uh, P614 NTFT2 and this diplomide as our uh, gel for our immobilizing our enzyme in that. So what we have done, this is a way to just, we have the gelator and we are ionic liquid, we make the heat, the our gel, and when the gel is cooling, we have done enzymes, and we made uh, give a two shape of our, our gel. One is the disc-like shape, and one is the spherical bits. And so this like shape is this like 20 millimeter and 3.5 millimeter width, and the spherical bits are 3.5 millimeter. And uh, then we test them for our enzyme activity. 
So for our enzyme activity, we have used a paratophenyl butyrate, a model substrate, a very common model substrate for enzyme activity assay, particularly for the lipase. And we have you tested in the using uh, the formation of the color from the yellow color, and uh, we have used uh, uh, using a 400 nanometer wavelength, which is particularly for this uh, yellow color solutions. And as you can see from this graph, uh, the black line is say the when the gel are in within the solutions, and without red is the without the gel. And uh, as you can see from the black line, that in presence of the gel, the enzyme is active. But when you remove the uh, gel from the enzyme solution, uh, from the aqueous uh, solution, there is no activity observed. And this happens, uh, we did uh, twice. Uh, so the significance of this uh, graph is that our enzyme, which is immobilized in the soft uh, ionic liquid gel is active. And uh, there is no residual activity observed in absence of the gel, suggesting there is no a leaching or at least no detectable leaching uh, in the condition that we use. And uh, here is, you can see the beautiful uh, gel uh, picture uh, with the uh, color, this come up with the yellow color solutions. And uh, and then we use these spherical beds this for uh, we to recycling our gel experiments. And uh, we have tried with three, three days and uh, continuously. And uh, what, with, uh, what we have seen is that our gel is uh, uh, there is, as you can see from here, there's no significant loss of activity observed at least uh, for nine consecutive rounds in three days. And uh, so it suggests that uh, these gels are highly operable, uh, operable in the, under the conditions and that they can be reusable further. Uh, and uh, at the ninth run, we did another test to see if there any leaching happens uh, from the uh, gel. So, so we did the same test with the, red, uh, the absence of the gel. And uh, we see that in absence of the gel, there is no activity, observed residual activity. So at the ninth run, after three days, we didn't see any leaching from the uh, enzyme from the gel. And so the, in summary of this part is that we have we are able to make uh, immobilized uh, lipase in, in, in the soft ionic liquid gel. And we have made a two different shape of this, give a disc shape and the bead shapes. And these gels are, are enzyme immobilized gels are able to uh, catalyze uh, model substrate with high activity and undetectable leachings, and they are recyclable for nine consecutive runs without loss of activity. And uh, my uh, second part of the talk, as I said, that uh, we will use a, a iron tumble uh, gel in uh, hard silica for the oxidation of water contaminant. And so here is our the iron tumble gels, and we are using the ionic liquid as a raincoat. So the principle is that this raincoat, which is the hydrophobic ionic liquid gels, will protect uh, the bulk water and from to protect this catalyst from the bulk water and produce the clean drinking water. And this is the famous quote, as you uh, all know about that, the water, water every year, nor any drop to drink. And this has been written in 1798. And the, the situation we know that these are, the author was uh, talking about the salty sea water, which is the natural phenomena. But after almost 300 years later, this is still exist, but the situation has changed. And this change is due to man-made catastrophe to our water bodies. And we are discharging our uh, chemicals, uh, our dyes, our everything toward the water bodies. And we are making this water scarce. And uh, this is now uh, one of the principal issues for clean drinking water, for, for at least for the developing countries. And so the clean drinking water is uh, the purify. This uh, water is an important challenge for uh, at least for the chemist that we are working in the catalytic this is area. And uh, so, as you can see, that uh, textile and dye industry alone contributing 70% of dye discharge to our water bodies. And uh, but the good part is that there are many different uh, techniques available. And uh, one of the major techniques used in the industrial purpose is the oxidations. And uh, but uh, the challenge with oxidation catalyst is that pH dependency and high iron deposition due to catalyst leaching and difficult to activating hydrogen peroxide. And uh, but uh, the iron tunnel uh, catalyst, uh, Professor uh, Tanja Collins from Carnegie Mellon University, he developed this uh, uh, catalyst, which is a uh, hydrogen peroxide activator and uh, in, been using an industrially for power and paper industry for water purification. And uh, it is also a good uh, degrades, uh, uh, catalyst for the dye degradation, degrades of the estrogens and organophosphorus pesticides. But as I mentioned, the challenge with this catalyst using as a homogeneous uh, uh, system is their uh, pH dependency. They are only uh, highly active at alkaline pH of uh, typically 8.5, but at pH lower, uh, acidic pH, for example, at six, they are short-lived or their activities uh, 
drastically de displaced. So we are thinking like that, can we give this uh, catalyst a suitable environment so we can operate them uh, in, in the water, uh, but giving that in the right conditions. And for that, we have made a, a gel systems uh, of this uh, immobilize this catalyst. And that this time we are using a binary mixture, as I mentioned earlier, that we can model the ionic liquid properties. So what we have did using a, a basic ionic liquid with a species entity of core OH, who is give the basic condition of, for this uh, iron thermal catalyst. And we are using an hydrophobic ionic liquid. And we made two gels or and another one we're using an another uh, under, uh, basic ionic liquid with, with the isoprosopropoxides and we're using a hydrophobic ionic liquid, which is a gel with the octyl sulfonate. So the, as you can see, there's both the gels uh, with the iron thermal catalyst are look very similar, but uh, the significant difference in there are some of the chemical properties. And because as you can see, their pore size and the surface area is a, a little different, but there is a difference. So oh, it is uh, tell us that uh, the, how the ionic liquid mixing or ionic liquid can ch change the properties of the materials if we can uh, make them a the right combinations. And once we have this uh, catalyst, uh, we are showing just examples of gel two to them uh, that uh, we are using to see that if that catalyst is active in dye degradations and the dye that we are using is a brilliant blue uh, dye. So similar to before, as I've said that we have used in presence and absence of the gel. So red is the in absence of the gel at 45 minutes, we have seen the activity. And after 45 minutes without gel, there is no activity. And then again, we have seen the activity. So as you can see from these figures, that uh, the in, in presence of the gel, uh, catalyst containing gel, the oxidation dye degraded, and absence there is no at least a degradation observed. And again, we have seen the uh, uh, activity. So that suggests that there is no residual activity observed, and no residual activity means that there is uh, no leaching happens, or at least no catalytically active amount of iron leaching happens from the gel. And here you can see this, uh, the nice figures, which is uh, on is the, with the extended gel and after the uh, dye degradation. So these gels are, are active in, in degrading the, uh, the gel and uh, the dyes. So, and we try to do the recycling the gel. So gel was uh, recycled for five times. Uh, initially we have seen some difference. It might be because some of the gel uh, product may be stuck on the inside the gels, but at the end of product, we have seen that both of these five positive runs, the gels are, are giving at least 90% of dye degradations in 90 minutes, uh, which is really good. And uh, we have seen that this can be do at least the time that we have repeated for five uh, consecutive runs. And uh, so in this part, uh, the conclusion is that we have uh, immobilized an a, a iron thermal catalyst in binary ionic liquid that behave as a raincoat to protect this catalyst and give the catalyst a right environment to operate in the water. In the water, these catalysts were active and recyclable for a degradation of the dye brilliant blue. And there's a low catalyst leaching and easy separation and recycle uh, we are achieved through our experiment. And uh, so I would like to thanks to my supervisor, Dr. Indumar, Dr. Patricia Mar, and Kunival City of Belfast, our collaborator, uh, Professor Terence Collins. And uh, Almec Bioscience is our uh, collaborator with uh, our uh, enzyme work with Professor Tom Moody, Stephen Mix, and Gareth Brown, and our group member, which is uh, Peter from a PhD student, Kyle and Andrew. And obviously, I would like to thanks to Catalysis Hub. I am now almost four years working with Catalysis Hub, and it is uh, really, really good help. And I've learned many things from Hub uh, and the Hub peoples, and also I'm still working on these projects. And uh, thanks to the EPSRC and Catalysis for serving and supports. And, uh, uh, Stay with science and stay with safe. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. Um, there is a question from um, Alex Brogan. Uh, what is the absolute activity of the lipase in the ionogels and how does it compare to other immobilization techniques? Uh, we, uh, we are trying to develop uh, a strategy and uh, the particular reason that uh, we are in collaboration with uh, Alma Bioscience, we are using uh, their commercial product. And uh, we still didn't uh, compare uh, the same uh, lipase with other kind source because the source could have been a different with others one. But what we have seen with the enzyme that we have uh, given from the Almec that these enzymes is highly active in the uh, gel. 
And uh, we have seen a small amount of uh, uh, product remain inside the gels, but uh, we've seen that uh, this product can be easily separable from the uh, inside the gel. And uh, we, because we are using comparing a gel and there is small amount of uh, product inside, remain inside the gel. So we are not uh, able to directly compare this to the other or make uh, the free enzymes that what is the activity, but uh, inside the uh, gel, the enzyme is uh, highly active. And as you can see from the recyclable data that uh, this enzyme is operable at least for three days and nine consecutive and it still remain active. So uh, I think uh, in, if it combines all these rounds, that would be very highly active and comparable to any other method uh, that exists in the, uh, right now. Hi, there's a question from Amit. Can we use this immobilized iron tamil industrial scale Dye absorption. Uh, we are uh, we are not sure that whether these these systems uh, are uh, for the absorption process because this is entrapment and uh, they are degraded. So the that might be different uh, for the absorption. Uh, but uh, uh, if we choose the right uh, ionic liquids, uh, that might be possible, uh, or maybe other system that might be possible to absorb dyes rather than to degrade. Uh, the system. So our systems is working like they degrade the dyes. Uh, they might be there some absorption involved initially, but they also degrade the dyes. Uh, they, so it is uh, maybe the same things are similar, but uh, this is not like absorption rather than the degradations. And we can separate the product, uh, the, make the uh, dye less harmful for the, but I think it would be possible to, if we tune the system, it is possible to absorb the dye in the industrial scale. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on to the question from Keith. Um, so there are functional groups in some of your ionic liquids, which are similar to those in the dye you're oxidizing. Have you looked at the principal mechanism of degradation of the ionic liquids in this reaction? Uh, no, we still uh, didn't try uh, of uh, the, that whether uh, this ionic liquid do uh, have any like uh, degradations, but uh, in, in we did try with the free ionic liquids for the dye degradation as an uh, experiment of a control, but we didn't see that they do the similar activity in uh, that we have seen in presence of the uh, catalyst. So, uh, but it, it, we will we could try and uh, investigate more on it because this is the simple. We just uh, uh, it start working. We are working on that. So our work is, is still continuing. So yeah, thanks for the suggestions. We will uh, look at that matter. Okay, another question from Alex Brogan. Um, in both systems, how much of an issue is the ionic liquid leakage from the gels into the aqueous solution around it? I guess uh, um, that relates to a question I had. You said also that there was very little deactivation, yet the, the last graph I think you showed um, certainly the second data point on that graph showed that there was significant deactivation. So is that ionic liquid leaching? Is that is that the enzyme leaching? I suppose it might be related to the question Alex um, said. So, so I think um, there are two questions there. Yeah, so uh, for the enzyme immobilizations, uh, yes, uh, I have uh, seen uh, some uh, anion leaching, the NTF22, but uh, it was uh, what I have seen, but in using the NMR as a detectable instrument. So in the NMR, we have seen like that at least uh, like uh, four ppm of the ionic liquids, or we, if we say that this four uh, microgram of ionic liquid from the 600 milligram of the ionic liquid leaching uh, from the NTF22. Uh, but uh, this is happens for the first run. But as we go through that, uh, then uh, I didn't see any uh, leaching of the ionic liquid. It could be possibly, as I said, that uh, because the, when we run the first run there, after we do the wash, before we run, we do the wash. So, but uh, maybe the first run when in presence of the substrate, there some of the ionic liquid may get off from the gel, but uh, later it remained very stable and I didn't see any uh, ionic liquid uh, leaching. Uh, we couldn't uh, trace any of the cation, which is the phosphonium by phosphorus, phosphorus NMR, we didn't see any change, but with uh, NTF2 by fluorine NMR, yes, uh, I have, uh, we have seen a small uh, leaching at the first run. Okay, and what about the deactivation? Because if you go, can you go back to your previous slide, the, um, go back a couple of slides? Yeah, so this graph here, um, you, you have 
only 50% diet or 50% diet remaining for um, the fourth and fifth use, I think it is, than the, or maybe the fifth use. Okay, I don't understand them. Can you explain the, in that particular graph, why you've got such a difference between the fifth use yes. and the, yeah. the fourth use and the third use? Uh, one of the explanation that uh, we have concluded from there is that uh, this uh, dye uh, requires some sorts of washing from one phase to another phase to go through. And we uh, suspect in that case that there might be some of the uh, remaining degraded dye still remain on the, on the first phase, as you can see from which is the third one. And the second one give us a very different results. So this is uh, not might be because of the uh, catalyst leaching or might be because of uh, the ionic liquid, but it might be that some of the dye already uh, from the previous run interrupted inside the gel and uh, they was not clean and they make some uh, accessible catalytic site occupied. So we didn't see any uh, good uh, results for that. So, but uh, as I said that, yeah, uh, this is something uh, dissimilar like from the other three. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions and I don't see any hands. Oh, I guess another question here in the chat uh, from Tom Backhouse. How viscous are the ionic liquids as a reaction medium? Is there any evidence of any diffusion limitations as the reactant stroke products move between the ionic liquid and the reaction phase? Uh, we still didn't investigate uh, that the phenomena or any sorts of kinetics, uh, we, but uh, we will keep this in mind uh, because we are really keen to develop this uh, platform and we will try every source of uh, other questions involved uh, in that. So thank you for the questions, but we will try to find any diffusions uh, happens or what, what source of diffusion, the mechanism of that, the substrate can go through and product can go out. So we will check that uh, of that uh, experiment uh, further. Okay. It might be worth you checking the activation barriers, I suppose, because that yeah. might give you some indication. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We will, we will try that. You know. Um, any other questions? If not, then I'd like to thank all three of the speakers this morning. They um, excellent presentations. Um, thank you very much indeed for coming. We're due back after our lunch break at three o'clock and Richard Catlow will be chairing the session. So I will leave you and um, see you at three o'clock. So thank you very much indeed to everyone and oh there's a oh hang on there is another question uh, is it possible to use the system with ultrasound or microwave for better results uh which system is that the silica one or the soft gel one uh either i think probably uh we use this uh, because the first one uh we made in the heat just the heating in the in, in the in, in a well bath or any sorts of heating and uh, we didn't use microwave because that might be detrimental to the enzyme um, and we didn't check par particularly because if there are any uh, all peroxide dyes activating reagent is there, that might uh, create some um, damage to the enzyme. So we didn't try with uh, the microwave heating uh, to make that, but uh, it might be possible, but uh, we, we could try, but we still, we didn't try about, think about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so I think we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Hassan. Thank you everyone. And thanks everyone, and see you at three o'clock. Thanks very much. Bye.